All right, so what I'm trying to do is create a wireless set of gaming peripherals for my space and giving the new Razer Lens Head Wireless a shot. It's definitely got big shoes to fill at $139 because the Rival 310 and the G Pro, which are my current two favorite mice, are half the price and more. So let's see if this laser mouse stands a chance right after this. Wow, is this yours? It sure is. But how? Hugh, 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 Hugh. It pays off to stay loyal. NZXT Hue Plus, now available in black or white, lighting up my Air RGB fans to complement the Kraken cooler all inside the beautiful Manta ITX. NZXT, bring all those colorful dreams together. Test your own imagination. Links for parts in the description below. So design-wise, I think Razer have done a good job here, giving us this gunmetal gray type of uh, top surface, although it is a bit slippery. The side rubber grips have that linear continuity from the front grills, and they even managed to sneak in some glossy plastic bits at the back. Really not a fan of the glossy plastic, however, it looks fantastic on video and photos, so again, they're pushing their marketing agenda onto you, but uh, in reality, they do kind of get covered in little smudges and stuff, but the surface is so little, it's kind of not significant. The illumination portions look fantastic with nice diffusion, good color vibrancy, excellent for product marketing again, but terrible for battery life. And so in five hours, I lost 25% of the battery. That's ridiculous. That's what light use, doing some Chrome browsing and some video editing and the mouse kind of staying idle in between. However, when I jumped into a competitive match for 45 minutes of constant use, I lost 5% of the battery. So the battery life is actually comparable to that of the G4 3 wireless with the lights on so you both get about two to three days of charge but if you turn off the illumination you get about a week's worth of charge now good thing the receiver brick is low profile and can be hidden on your desk somewhere and the cable can be plugged in into the mouse when you need to charge up i do like the usb dongle it's very small and can be stored away on the mouse itself when you need to travel the mouse shuts off during the night or you can also manually switch that off with the button underneath and if the battery is below 15 percent or a threshold we get a blinking red led on the scroll wheel now the body shape to the most part is good but there are some quirks so first, ambidextrous form is appreciated for left-hand users, but the front section flares out on both sides, making for an uncomfortable grip on the right side where my ring and pinky fingers are. So I wish the section was a bit slimmer and it immediately feels off when compared to something more comfortable like the Rival 310. Also, the top of the thumb section where the browser buttons are, are not angled enough. So over time, my thumb eventually sits on the back browser button instead of it being underneath it. And for smaller hands, palm grip will be okay but the lens head favors finger grip more with its flatter top surface the buttons are all good nice separation between the primary left and right clicks with good location for the dpi shift and a comfortable feedback on the browser buttons as well and the scroll wheel is textured with light middle click and easy to feel scroll steps and so if you can get behind the price point of the lens head, you're okay with the shape and you're okay with charging this thing every two to three days, you might actually be disappointed in the sense of performance because it is still laser. Despite very high quality optical sensors available on other wireless iterations like the G403 or the G900. Not exactly sure what Razer is thinking because the wired version of this uh, mouse has a optical sensor, but the wireless comes with laser only. Now the issue with the lens head for me is not the latency, everything feels okay there, but the liftoff distance that despite calibration and Razer Synapse software crashed on me twice in the three times that I've tried to calibrate for the surface, so that's a bit ridiculous. And despite the calibration, the mouse cursor moves way too much when you lift off the mouse and when it comes down to be considered acceptable for such a premium product or, or any competitive gaming. I've also experienced some sensor freezes where the mouse clicks will be registered, but the mouse movement is not registering at all. So I'm stuck with a dead mouse. After three seconds, once I start to move the mouse, there is a bit of motion going on and eventually the sensor starts to pick up and everything goes back to normal. So I figured out it was the crash during the surface calibration that caused this because after recalibrating my surface, I've had no sensor stuttering issues after that.
And third, despite playing on the same DPI level as my rival or the G Pro, I cannot control my flicks or the super fast aim correction. It still feels like there's some form of acceleration and for a gaming mouse that is the worst thing if you already have your wrist memory and how much you need to flick and how much you need to maneuver in order to aim control. Um, so yeah, I am not comfortable using this even though I've been trying to you know game with this for like a week. And uh, usually I am getting comfortable and get to know the mouse in one or two days but I'm still almost learning exactly where to position, you know, where to aim with this thing. And that's not a good thing. And so combine that with the jerky liftoff movement, uh, it's just not a mouse for competitive shooters at all. Even when it's uh, connected with a wire, the laser sensor here is far inferior to what is available in the market for much lower price points. And even if wireless is your priority, I would still recommend uh, going with like the G4 or 3 wireless that has a much better shape and a fantastic sensor or the G9 100, which has a bit of an odd shape for me, but still I would recommend the G4 or 3 over any wireless iterations that is available in market right now. And uh, so that means that the Razer lens head will not be in my wireless arsenal that I'm trying to build. Always stay charged with Linky Power Up Power Banks, housed in gorgeous aluminum enclosure with dual USB and Type C port with support for Quick Charge 3.0 to get your devices recharged fast. Available up to 20,100 milliamp hour capacities. Check them out in the description below. And so that's it for my review of the Razer Lancet Wireless. I am disappointed they've decided to stick with the laser sensor in here instead of going something more superior that uh, still is compatible with wireless. But make sure to check out those other videos that are more relevant for this wireless gaming arena. So thanks so much for watching. I'm Dimitri with Hyra Connects, and we'll see you in the next video.